happened here on the scene here uh, on Seymour Avenue in Cleveland that I want to tell you about just a few minutes ago. Two wrecking crews, two wrecking companies took away two vehicles from the Castro family home, or rather the Castro home, which is actually this way here on Seymour. They took away a maroon Jeep and a red Toyota pickup truck. One of the tow truck operators told me earlier this afternoon that they were hauling away three vehicles for investigators to go over, uh, obviously comb over for evidence and try and find any evidence, uh, if any, in those three vehicles that were at the Castro home. There's still so many questions today, almost 24 hours after this story broke, about who these three brothers are, who these three suspects are. I found a document in the courthouse in downtown Cleveland just a few hours ago that sheds a little bit of light on one of the brothers, Ariel Castro. This here in my hand, this is a petition for domestic violence civil protection order. Now, this was filed by the mother of the two children that Ariel Castro and this woman had together. It was filed back in 2005. The woman's name is Gramilda. Ficuroa. Now, she claimed back in 2005 that Castro beat her, broke her nose, broke ribs, knocked out her tooth, threatened to kill her and their daughters three or four times just that year alone, 2005. Now, even more revealing, according to the document, Ficuroa had full custody with no visitation of their two children for Castro, the document says. But nevertheless, Castro frequently abducts his daughters and keeps them from their mother. Pretty revealing stuff again from this civil action here in 2005, a petition for domestic violence civil protection order filed by a woman who had two children with one of the Castro brothers. Now today, the two daughters of the couple would be about 25 and 22 years old. Earlier, we spoke this afternoon with a man who says that he grew up with Ariel Castro, that 52 year old who lives here on Seymour Avenue. What's his personality like? His personality, he's a good person. You would never, ever, ever realize that this guy would have done something like that. There's no way impossible. He, he was basically camouflaged with, with the crowd. He was an outgoing person. Um, he blends in with the crowd over there in Seymour. Back here live on Seymour Avenue, this has become quite a scene in the last 24 hours or so since this story broke here in Cleveland. There is a helicopter up in the air, uh, a news helicopter presumably taking shots, live pictures of the, of the house here, which is just about a block behind me on the left side. There are TV crews all over the place on both sides of a barricade that police have set up. Again, we're about a block away from the center of all this activity, and police continue to investigate, looking for forensics. I mentioned just a few minutes ago those two vehicles taken away from the scene, uh, taken to uh, investigators so they can go through closer and comb through and look for any kind of evidence that may be in those vehicles. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock, we talk to a lot of residents here and a lot of onlookers, and we'll have much more on how this media circus, if you will, is affecting the people who live here and, of course, the people here in Cleveland who have followed these uh, missing cases for so long, so many years. We are live in Cleveland. Jason Law, 9 on your side.